Depth is an important concept for deep learning. Obviously, the conclusion of numerous studies is that the deeper the network, the better. The ResNet architecture was able to prove this fact in a very dramatic way by training networks much deeper than usual. The ResNet architecture was primarily inspired by the VEG architecture. At the time, this 19-layer architecture was a, as deep a network that could be possibly trained. The VGG architecture, which is the subject of this ritual, was in turn inspired by the AlexNet architecture. This legendary network had only a few layers, yet was used as the blueprint for the GGG that outperformed with it, which then was used as a blueprint for ResNet. The main difference between VGG and AlexNet are simple. The network was deeper, and it has smaller convolutional filters. These two changes were enough to improve the performance on image classification drastically. We'll take a look at the architecture from the paper Very Deep Convolution Network for Large-Scale Image Recognition and dissect the official PyTorch documentation at the end. First, let's get started with AlexNet, since VGG is based on this architecture. By the way, I got a full video on AlexNet, check it out. A few important characteristics of AlexNet are that it isn't too deep, it only has 5 layers, it uses local response normalization, it has three variety of filter, the 11 by 11, 5 by 5, and 3 by 3. And in total, it has about 60 million parameters, which is about half of the VGG architectures. At the bird eye view, the VGG architecture main highlights are one, the input is always a 224 by 204 image. It only uses 3 by 3 convolution and 1 on 1 for one of the configuration. Max pooling is used at a few spots throughout the network. There's a fully connected layer at the end, like AlexNet. The ReLU activation units are used throughout. Local response normalization is not used much except in the first layers. Okay, let's take a deep look at the layers throughout the different configuration that we have. First off, the input layer is always the same throughout all configuration. In the image here, it represented the hair as a gray square. At the end of the network, the output is always the same. Three fully connected network finished by softmax for a thousand class since we're training on ImageNet. It's the following purple blocks in the image. The max pooling layers are a bit everywhere in the network and separate blocks of layers. They are represented by the red square cube here in the image. As a reminder, a 2x2 max pooling with a stride of 2 looks like this. Right? For each of the colored square, we take the highest number to make a smaller square. In the code, we'll use some specific label for the max pooling layer, title M. We'll get to that in a few. The first configuration A is simply VGG11 because it has 11 weight layers. There is a variation of this configuration titled ALRN that represents VGG11 with local response normalization near the input. As a disclaimer, local response normalization is a pretty cool idea lifted directly from the retina, but it's not that useful in practice. Check out the show I made on the subject if you're interested in the link with the central nervous system. The configuration B is VGG13 with, without local response normalization from now on. Configuration C is VGG16 uh, with a bunch of uh, one by one convolution layers. Visually, uh, the, the one on one convolution look like this. It's a, it's a one on one convolution that effectively reduced the total volume from the previous layer by doing a linear combination followed by a, a non-linear tree. In this case, it's a, it's a really. Configuration D is VG16, but without the bottlenecks. Finally, configuration E is VG19. All of these networks have roughly the similar amount of parameter, which equate to more than about tw twice uh, those of AlexNet. In the PyTorch World True section, we'll see that the A, B, D, and E configuration were implemented in the official documentation. This network was trained for the main result on ImageNet, which is a thousand class dataset used for image recognition problem. This is used throughout many uh, research papers. The training procedure used on all configuration was stochastic gradient descent with momentum, L2 penalty, so ridge. And finally, a dropout was used on the fully connected layer at the end with a probability of 50%. For the initialization of the network, two motions was adopted. The first one is the configuration of a was randomly initialized with the normal distribution for the weights and with the zeros for the bias term. Um, that network was then used, the configuration A network, as a base for fine-tuning the other version of VGG. So all the other versions were fine-tuned A with more layers. Interestingly, 
the author noted that another initialization scheme could have been used that would have not required this type of fine-tuning. The VGG network used scale jittering for data augmentation as part of its training procedure to augment the datasets. Basically, it means that doing copy and pasting of different data points to create new data points like we see in this uh, picture. Okay, so the first result of interest is that the deeper the network, the better the performance, meaning that VGG 16 and 19 were outperforming all the other version of VGG. So VGG 19 being the best performing network of, of them all. Then the auto modified the test scales. We won't go into the technical aspect of this, but basically they were able to improve the performance of the network at test time by using different scale for the image. The VG16 and 19 were the two most performant network in that setup. So from now on, this is the two that we're going to use to uh, assess their performance. The others use different evaluation techniques on top of the different test scales they use to further refine their performance. Bottom line here is that VG16 and 19 were improving marginally using this grouping technique. Finally, they combined a few of their trained network in what they call fusion covnets. Bottom line here, VG16 plus 19 together are even better than themselves and they added like the multi-crop and dense evaluation stuff. As an aside, you will see this idea of ensemble of network pushing the performance further in later years also. Um, even with an, a single network, you can improve the performance by doing implicit ensemble and training different parts of the network on each batch. A uh, good example of this is the stochastic depth technique and uh, drop path from FractalNet. Okay, this point, they found out that VG16 and 19 were very good. They decided to compare them against other networks like Google uh, Net, the spatial pyramid pooling, I think in the paper it's called MSRA, overfit, and that's the result. So overall, we can see that the VG network is doing great with the ensemble of network dominating the performance. So here is VGG with two nets. Google net kind of still a thunder a bit, having the best performance, but VGG are, are still very competitive. It's very close here. So overall, it shows that the idea behind the VG network are valid, worthwhile to further improve uh, the performance of deep network. So the overall best configuration here is E with VGG 19. The image I've shown throughout, by the way, is uh, VG16. Okay, let's check out the new architecture in the PyTorch Discord. Uh, the GitHub is in the description and you can follow along with the readme. So here we are in the code. It's in uh, the GitHub that I will link below. This is directly stolen from um, the PyTorch documentation. And what I did is I cut some parts out uh, so that we don't have too much to look at. Um, and if you see here, we're just doing VGG19. Uh, which we already saw. Um, yeah, that's it. I cut every other network. We're using the VGT19 um, and we're gonna look at it step by step here. There's the VGG class that brings everything together. This is using make layers. There's this weird config stuff. Uh, you're gonna see it's actually the, uh, the configurations uh, table that we've saw before. There's the underscore VGG function here, which is used by uh, the actual API over here that you can use in our documentation. Okay, so let's break it down. So I put a nice readme here um, to show you like uh, my thought process. So that if you prefer to read this thing instead of watching me talk about it, just go ahead. Um, yeah. So the actual way to use this is to do VGG19 and then you uh, they will output the model can give a bunch of parameters. Here BN stand, stand for batch normalization, which was not used at the time, but it's useful for a VG network. But anyway, so this is what's happening. And then this is calling uh, this uh, function here. Or if we move the documentation, that's basically what we're doing. We're using the internal function uh, underscore VGG. And here we're using E, right? Which is the E configuration. So VG19 and a bunch of parameter we're gonna see in a few. So jumping down to the underscore VGG, we have this, we have something called configuration, which is a string that signify what flavor of VGG we want to use. We have batch norm, which is a Boolean. So is batch norm. True, you're gonna use it. False, you're not gonna use it. And then the weights are here if you have pre-trained um, the model already. If you did uh, have the pre-trained weight, you can just load them up and then it will output the model straight up. Okay, so this is that 
The section that is interesting for us is this one. Let's assume it's not pre-trained and we actually want to train from scratch. And it's this VGG class, which we'll call, it's a bit weird this one, uh, compared to how the other um, PyTorch class are set up. But in this case, you have VGG, and then it only has one kind of parameter here, which is the output of make layers, which then accept this configuration in batch norm. Usually make layers is inside the the whatever network class. Anyway, so you have make layers here and uh, the configuration stuff here, and that's kind of it. Let's take a look at each of the part one by one. So configuration, we have that. So we have, it's a dictionary basically with A, B, D, E. So if you give E, it will take that and input an array completely. And if you see this array, 64, 64, M, 128, and M, blah, blah. The, the, this is the input channel that we want for each of the convolution layers. And this is when we're gonna do max pooling and then you just continue throughout here. So we see a few max pooling happening throughout over here and end with another one. So this is the fifth one. So let's check out, look, this is how it's run. Let's check out the make layers function now. So make layers, right? We have the configuration. So this list that we give, then we have if we're doing batch norm or not, and then it will return uh, basically uh, the module that we that we need as a second module. So if we break down the whole thing, we start with the input channel of three here, and then we're gonna iterate of on all of the configuration. So here, this one, we're gonna go 64, 64, M, 128, 128, M. And if you see, when we have um, uh, a V equal M, we're gonna add a max pooling with the size, uh, a two, two max pooling with the stride of two. And we're just gonna add it to the layers here, which is basically uh, a list of the all of the modules that we're gonna add. So this is one module to max pooling 2D. Otherwise, if it's not this, we're gonna do that, this part over here. So if we zoom in on this part over here, we take whatever number, so 64, 128, 256, or 512, cast into an integer, drop it over here, and then we're gonna create a convolution, uh, convolution layer with uh, the kernel size of three, so a three by three, and we're gonna do uh, put the input channel here and the right, uh, the right output uh, channel here. The important point, uh, is that uh, there's no one by one, it's all three by three. The one by one, if you remember, is uh, on the C one, C configuration, which we don't have, we have A, B, D, and E. If it's batch norm that we need to do after that, we're gonna do a conv norm, batch norm, ReLU. If there's no batch norm, like in the VGG paper, we're just gonna do conv uh, and then ReLU, and that's it. We add it into the layers, and we're gonna change the input channel for the next iteration to be whatever this was. So. First it will be three, and then it will be 64, 64, 128, all that. At the end of the make layers, we're just gonna return the sequential, uh, uh, return the layers list that we have as a sequential, and we're done. Okay, let's take a look at VG now to see how all of this kind of get bring together. So we have uh, the uh, input here, we have the features, and then we have a bunch of stuff that are uh, already kind of hard coded. So like in the paper, we have a thousand class, uh, the initial initialization of the weights are true. Remember the, the slide about initialization. And then we have a dropout of 0 0.5. You can change these, but that's, that's VGG, that's how it was set up. So there's the init part over here. There's the initialization of the weight over here. Then there's the forward function. Um, let's take a look at each of the part uh, together. So the layer creation, the weight initialization, and then the forward function. The layer creation. If we look over here, we have a few uh, a few steps. We have uh, in first, we have the features thing, which is exactly what make layers was doing. So everything before the last uh, fully connected layer. Then we have an average pooling that is happening. And then there's like our uh, series of classifier which is basically one fully connected layer with the ReLU and the dropout applied here, another fully connected layer with the ReLU and the dropout, and a last uh, fully connected layer. So this is the three layers that we have at the end that are fully connected. And that's that. So for the weight initialization, so we're here. If it's true, we're gonna do it. Usually it's better to do it. And then we're gonna initialize all of these uh, properly. So there's uh, all of the different ways of initializing them. Um, for the linear, uh, for the fully connected, we're using these. For the batch norm ones, we're using these. 
and then for um, the bias we're using zero and then we're going to use a normal distribution here for um, the convolution like in the paper finally the fourth bring it all together just like in other uh, classes in, in PyTorch so we have the uh, we take the input right and we jam it into all of the layers that we already created with make layers we do the average pooling so take the output of that put it here get something out and then we're gonna flatten the whole thing so that we can uh, jam it into the last three classifiers unit and basically at the end we return um, the output of that and we're done all right everyone i hope that this was useful uh, do let me know in the comment if you have a particular request for a deep learning architecture thank you for those that did uh, if you have any question or comments don't hesitate to ask i'd love to make these videos and have a great week everyone Thank you.